started seeing peregrine falcons flying around the campus in uh, 2007. And it occurred to me, I, I saw them sitting on the water tower and on a small window ledge in the water tower near the top. And it occurred to me that perhaps with a bit of encouragement that they might breed there because it's quite a high spot. They have a good view of the landscape. They can see and, and launch themselves upon unsuspecting pigeons and starlings and so on. And so I got permission to uh, take, some, take some wood up the internal staircase and we built the box up there and, and then installed it. It was quite, quite a job um, to do that. Uh, well, then we put in a small, uh, small webcam, which we borrowed, to have a look and see what was happening. And uh, for the first year, the birds used the box, but they didn't breed. They just used it to, uh, to eat and to rest and so on. Uh, and then the following year, they had a, a very late breeding season, and we had one chick. Uh, we then had an another year with three chicks, and then we really realized the box was too small. So we re got rid of that box and reconstructed it and got this monster box up there, which is, was quite scary. Um, <laughs> and then, um, the, so since then, we've had, I think, t over 20 uh, successful fledgings. Uh, the equipment has been upgraded. We now have, f in fact, four different uh, cameras, uh, three pointing inside the box and we have a new one from last year which is outside and looking at the outside of the tower so we can see what they do when they're not in the box at least to a certain extent uh, so that was um, that's all going very well um, a couple of years ago or a few years ago now we were able to link it through YouTube and then the YouTube also has a, a chat function uh, during the last week we've had over a thousand people watching at any one time. So it's quite busy. I have uh, six moderators who help me with the, the chat. Uh, they are scattered all over the world. I have some in Scotland, Netherlands, USA, Australia uh, to, to uh, answer questions and make sure the conversation keeps on track uh, and so on. Um, and so that's where we are now. My, my main function and the reason I wanted to do this was because I was interested in studying the behavior. Um, so my research is it's basically in three strands. I'm looking at the, bre the breeding behavior from August to uh, November, December, uh, looking at how much the parental effort each of the bird makes how much time does the male incubate? How much time does the female incubate? Those sort of questions. Who feeds the babies? Who does what? When? I'm then also interested in their behavior for the rest of the year. This project goes right through the year and right through the night as well. Uh, and it's the only one in Australia that does that. There is one in Melbourne, but they only cover the breeding season. So I'm interested in when they start courting. When they start courting, they, they bring... Uh, the male will bring a, a prey item to the female and then sometimes he forgets he's supposed to hand it over and grabs it back off her but every year he learns and he improves and then the third strand is the diet what, what are they eating um, is it mainly introduced species is it native species who catches what it's been observed that the males on average will catch smaller items than the female and um, so that's I guess that's about it I'm uh, currently working on the first paper on the breeding biology and I'm about three quarters of the way through that I think <laughs> uh, I hope to finish the three papers by May that's my plan how different is this family from others uh, well I'll be honest it's been as I say we've, if we've had families every year since 2008, uh, in a couple of those years, we had no chicks. In one year, we had three eggs, but they all broke before hatching, and so we lost the year. And then in another year, we only had one chick, and that chick was blown out of the box prior to fledging in a thunderstorm. Uh, and there was a third year when we did have a, a, a fledging. Uh, this was last year, in fact. 
But the chick didn't survive in the wild. You know, it lasted about a week, and then we had a week of extremely bad weather, thunderstorms. Uh, we've been badly affected by La Nina, which is a weather phenomenon where the Pacific Ocean warms up and we get a lot of extra moisture in America, in Australia. And uh, that's what happened the last three years. We had very poor weather in November, lots of thunderstorms. So this year we've had, we had the two chicks, and there's, that's quite normal, except that they were a long way apart. They, the, chick, the eggs usually hatch within a day or two of each other. But this year, they were nearly five days apart. In fact, we didn't think that the second egg would hatch. We thought we would just have one, the one chick. But it did hatch, and the chick is fine. Uh, he's developing a little bit more slowly than his brother, but he's getting there, and I don't have any worries for him. I'm, I'm not really a worrier anywhere. I'm, I, I'm more of a re research and I observer. <laughs> uh, I, it is what it is, you know. But uh, yes, yeah, so no, he's doing fine, and um, I, I expect him to take off to fledge, which is the first flight, is what, what it means, uh, within a week, and then they'll, and the other one will go out. The other one has already fledged, of course, um, but for some reason or other, he's decided to come back to the box, which is which does happen. It's not un, it's not that unusual. But what is unusual is that he hasn't actually left again. He's stayed in the box for over two nights now. And that is a little bit unusual. I don't know whether that's because his little brother is there and he wants to be with his little brother and he knows where that's where the food is. It might just he might just be a little bit lazy and we need to <laughs> need to get him out again. What the parents will do, of course, is if he's a bit slow. But, and in fact, we've already seen that this morning. I made a video this morning of the male hovering outside the box as if he was trying to persuade the young one to come out. Uh, and they will, they will do that. If the tricks are a bit reluctant to leave home, they will they'll fly past with nice-looking prey and say, come on, if you want breakfast, you're going to have to follow me. <laughs> Increasing the number of people watching this event uh, and became like, kind of like popular now on YouTube. Eh? It's very popular. The, some of the videos, one of the videos I made of um, the first flight of Indigo Uh, I just, no, I was looking in there this morning, I was looking at some of the comments, and I noticed that one of the videos had had 18,000 views, which is really quite amazing, um, because there aren't even that many subscribers. Uh, so it is very popular. Uh, we try and keep it sort of informal and chatty, but also educational, um, which is quite tricky, because you, you get people come in who sometimes want to be, you know, stir up a bit of trouble. They like a bit of drama. They don't want to see things going smoothly. <laughs> we have to have to be careful that the chat doesn't get out of control because we have school children who watch. A whole, whole, well, there's a whole class that contacted me, uh, but that were in Texas and they were watching with their children. The teacher contacted me. So we need to be careful that the language is appropriate and so on. Human being, like myself, yourself, everybody, What we can learn from those uh, for, from this event? What what is the? Uh, I don't understand. Sorry. Uh, well, you never. Cross I don't know. I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that you can really draw parallels between peregrine falcons, who are you know predators. Uh, they're the top of the food chain. They are quite. They are quite aggressive. Uh, they're not. The siblings get on well together, um, but I. I'm not sure quite what you mean. You can't really make parallel similarities between peregrines and, and human beings. Are, are you suggesting that people should learn from the peregrines to live a more natural life? I, I'm yeah. not quite sure what something like that. Something like that. It's, it's, it maybe it's bizarre my question, but something like that. Yeah. Just it's more. I think it's more that that we want people to to understand and to appreciate nature uh, for its own intrinsic value. Not so much that they can draw parallels on on behavior, because it is it is a very different type of animal, uh, a peregrine falcon. It's uh, <laughs> they're very they're very solitary. For instance, you don't see the the parents don't hang about together. They, they when they sit on the top of that tower that you can see in the picture, uh, they sit right at the opposite ends of the tower. <laughs> they never sit close together. 
together. They're very solitary creatures. They people, the people that watch the peregrines, they say things like, "Oh, look, it's brotherly love and and this sort of thing." And it's probably not true. It's it's probably more that the that, that they're there together in the box because that's where the food is, you know. <laughs> so I, I, one needs to be a little bit careful of that. What we call it anthropoph- anthropomorphism, where you you try and put human qualities on to, onto wild animals, and I don't really think there's much point in doing that. To be honest, um, that's my opinion. Your contribution is, is in the research area. You are a scientist. My PhD was actually in something a bit different. I, it was to do with birds. It was to do with the restoration on farms for wildlife habitat. That. So how when farmers put in shelter belts and windbreaks and so on, and I, I, I spent a lot of time studying different designs of um, these uh, revegetation schemes to see how they would benefit wildlife. And so the study of peregrine falcons sort of fell in my lap a bit. It uh, wasn't something I was planning to do, um, but it, it, it is a, a, so I'm more of an ecologist than I am a biologist, but I, I do find it very interesting um, and uh, they are fun to watch. I mean, the, it's very entertaining um, watching, the, watching the birds and their, and their interactions with each other um, and I get a lot of help I mean I'm actually a, an adjunct lecturer so I'm no longer I'm no longer paid by the university in fact nobody involved with this project is paid everybody is a volunteer um, except the people who help me with the IT they work for the, the university um, but everybody else who actually works on this project uh, is um, unpaid but but we still need we still need funding because we have to upgrade the equipment computing equipment and camera equipment and so on uh, so we do accept donations through the through the website and the website is a fountain of information it's it's worth telling your readers to or your listeners i should say to to have a look at it it's called the falcon cam project csu charles Sturt university and it's goes back has a lot of history and interesting information in it. Lots of nice pictures too. Uh, did any media they call you or they want to know what's going on over there? Or? I have been. I have quite a lot to do with the local uh, paper and the local ABC, which is our national uh, Australian Broadcasting Corporation, uh, and a few other commercial channels. Um, I don't rouse up a lot of natural in, national interest. Um, That's probably just because I'm not particularly interested in doing a lot of media. I probably could if I wanted to. We do, we were on national TV once or a couple of times. Um, but yeah, there's a bit of interest, especially when something happens. You know, when the, uh, I should actually do something about the fact that the birds are out and about now. Um, but I have to be careful. I don't actually want people to come up and see the birds at the moment because they could be attacked. Peregrine falcons are very protective of their young. Uh, and it's actually interesting at the moment because our university, I don't know whether you've read our local news, probably not, but Australia is having terrible floods at the moment. And the, the flooding is actually quite close to Orange. There's a town only 50 kilometers away, which is under, pretty much underwater. And the people, a lot of the people that live there have actually become homeless and the university is hosting them. So there's quite a lot of people walking about and I have to give them a warning to be careful there are certain areas they shouldn't go uh, in case the peregrine mother decides to have a go at them uh, if the if the babies are the babies are actually in the box at the moment so they're fine but they'll come out very soon probably even before this weekend and then the people need to be very careful walking about even i do i always i duck from tree to tree when i'm chasing them <laughs> Finally, can you say something to the global audience, like uh, advice for, uh, I don't know, the, in the chat room how to behave? Well, it's, it would be lovely if people uh, come and uh, watch the, uh, the YouTube live stream and particularly to join in, join in the chat and ask questions. And then if they want more information, they can, they can head up to the website, which is very, very informative. And people can also contact me directly. I'm happy to get uh, email. My email address is actually on the uh, bottom of the information below the live stream. And um, yes, come and join us. And this season is nearly is nearly finished, but we actually don't close. We keep going. The birds themselves 
will be here almost every day until the next breeding season because they don't migrate here. They, they're resident they, and they need to protect their home. This is the concrete Hilton. It's a very posh home for peregrines. <laughs> it's, the best, it's, the best, it's the best real estate for them um, in, in kilometres. So they, uh, they protect it very closely. <laughs> okay. So goodbye and thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you very much. Listen to this and other podcasts on Omar Global Radio, omarglobo.com. From Quebec, Canada, Omar Rodríguez reported.